Hey, what's going on everybody? Colton here. If you guys want to know the easiest way to catch flounder this summer and fill your cooler up, then this video is for you. Behind me, I've got the Chesapeake Bay and the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. Today, we're going to go out there and we're going to catch a cooler full of nice quality flounder. And I'm going to show you the rod and reel I use, the rigs I use, and the baits I use to make it all happen. All right, so stick around guys. I'll see you on the water. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to look at is the rod and reel combo. So this rod right here is a Tsunami Trophy Series rod. You can see right there, the MH, this is a medium heavy and it's rated for a lure weight of one to three ounces. So the bucktail that we're using on this rig today is a one and a half ounce bucktail. So this is a great rod for this. We got a medium heavy, so it's got the backbone to pull the flounder up off the bottom, but, and it's also got a fast action tip to feel those bites. All right. The reel, this is actually a 4,000. That's a little bit bigger than I like to use for flounder fishing. I like a two to 3,000, but this is a Pen Pursuit 2. It's an extremely budget friendly reel option, but it's a good reel for what we're doing out here. And it's lightweight enough that it doesn't bother me when I'm out there holding it and jigging up and down for flounder. All right guys, so this is the three-way swivel rig or the three-way bucktail rig. So the only knot you're gonna need for this if you fish with braided line is the Palomar knot connecting your braided line to your three-way swivel. And then two clinch knots connecting your leader material to your hooks, all right? So we got the Palomar knot connecting the main line to the top of the three-way swivel. And then we have our leader material tied off to the second eye on the three-way swivel leading off to a kale hook. Then at the bottom of the three-way swivel, we've got another clinch knot tied to our one and a half ounce bucktail. So if this is your main line, your braided line, you wanna <clears throat> first double it up like so. And you wanna take the doubled up end and run it through your first eye in the three-way swivel. Then centering the swivel on the line, you wanna come back across underneath, and there you've created a loop. And once you've created this loop, you wanna take the line, run it through that loop, and pull it tight. And the last thing you need to do, it's a really simple knot, is take your swivel and if you have a whole rig on you got to run the whole rig through here but it's easier to do with just the swivel first and then tie the rest of the rig but in that loop that you created take your swivel come up through the bottom and out the top then you have everything on this side and the last thing to do is just cinch it all down just like that just pull it tight and you've got your palomar knot here. So for the clinch knot, take your leader line and you're going to use this on the kale hook itself as well as the eye of the three-way swivel. So you take the main line, run it through the eye, and then all you do is wrap it around, wrap the running end around the main line anywhere between five to eight times I usually do seven or so but you wrap it around and then just run it back through the original loop you created and cinch it down You just want to make sure that on your initial drop down you feel bottom with that bucktail or if you're using like a high low rig that your weight touches bottom and then you want to pull off it to avoid your hang ups which i've already been hung up twice today that's just the name of the game when you're flounder fishing you're gonna get hung up that's how you know you're down there and you're fishing the right stuff because a lot of people think flounder just love to lay flat on the sand which they do but structure fishing for flounder is extremely effective that's why in the little uh, 
holes created by the pylons of the bridge, it's a great place. Or spots like this where it's a sandy bottom and you've got a lot of rocks down there. Great hiding spots for flounder. Doormat. That is what we came for, baby. <laughs> Woo. I'm so pumped right now. This is my first flounder trip of the year. And this one's a stud. Let me get a measurement of this guy. 20 inch flounder, baby. Let's see if we can get another one. When you're drift fishing like this, it's important to gain a reference point after you hook up because it helps you get yourself back on that same drift. And I'm not saying you're going to catch another flounder right in that exact same spot, but you want to be able to maintain your drift and get back on that same line you were fishing if you like that water depth. So for me, up under that little black tube right there or pylon or whatever that is there is a uh, little red gas can and so when i'm pushed out messing with the fish i can find that gas can and get myself lined back up for my drift That's a flounder. Oh yeah. Good one. Feels like a good one. Oh yeah, he's a good one. Oh, he came off. Oh my gosh, he came off. I lost him when I went for the net. That's a flounder. That's another keeper. Oh, okay. All right. All right, buddy. Come on. Yes, sir. There we go. And that is why I should have my net in front of me. Eighteen. Eighteen and a half. There we go, guys. Eighteen and a half inches right there. Another nice flounder for the cooler. That's a flounder. Another good one, another real good one. Yes, there we go. One more. I know I said I wanted one more, but that came a little too quick. Bag limit's four. Woo, he's throwing hooks at me. Let's see if we can get another one. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for the fishing portion today. I didn't have a lot of time to be out here, but we made the right move by coming out for flounder. Awesome trip. Uh, we got three really nice keepers in the bag, and we lost one that I think was the biggest one of the day. It always feels like it's the biggest one of the day when you lose it, but I do think the one we lost was the biggest that we dealt with today. But we got three really nice ones in the cooler, which is awesome. But anyway, enough yapping. Let's get back to the house.
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. The whole point of this video was to get out there with some simple rigs and show you guys the easiest way to fill your cooler with quality flounder. And I think we got the job done, all right? If you have some other ways that you like to target flounder, throw it down in the comment section below. If you go out there and you try this method, let me know how you did, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time.